Hey Scorpio, this is your new moon forecast for October 16th, 2020. We have a new moon in Libra. I know this is not your favorite thing because it's in your 12th house. But I want you to understand that this is actually an amazing thing for you. Um, your 12th house is actually naturally ruled by Venus, which is in your 11th house. So you're going to be feeling the benefits of this through your social structures. You're going to be making subconscious changes. There will be things subconsciously for you merging. And there may be little light flickers every once in a while because you've got Mercury retrograde going through your sign with Juno. You may have little light flickers coming from uh, children. Uh, I like to say Juno is not only material like marital devotion but uh, family devotion um it should very much you see juno aspects um, and juno's with mercury retrograde in your sign uh for this new moon you see juno aspects a lot in sinistry and composites with a mother child or father child um and, and this really is where we get our principle of the masculine and the feminine internalized as a child this is where we see our parents as gods we see them as this this, these eternal beings that are there can be no wrong, or at least we're supposed to, right? <laughs> That's what they told us. That's what they told me. Anyway, Scorpio, um, this new moon is happening in your 12th house, uh, working from your subconscious, through your personality, out your mouth and values, into your perception and conceptualization, and... And that's where you're really going to feel it because there has been so many big conceptual ideas that have changed for you since oh, two years now, it's probably been, and it, it, it's come to a head many, many times. But all of the planets that are in Capricorn in your third house are now moving forward where they had come together in January. And then in March, we had the retrograde start. And all through the spring and the summer, we saw these like weird, crazy retrogrades. And we're still in it. Like, I'm not going to lie to you. But the retrogrades in Capricorn are done. Okay, Capricorn, we have figured out where the structures are broken. Scorpio, you already knew where the holes were. And they started flooding through. And now we have you know, new understandings of how water works and we have new understandings of what happens when you let cracks go through the floods and new ideas and perceptions are starting to come through on how to, you know, contain things differently, how to structure and formulate things differently. That's happening like a global perspective, Scorpio, and, and you've seen it coming. Um, and now those formulations are coming through the perceptions of your ideas and they're going to be coming from people in your immediate Oh, surrounding so like these are people in your neighborhood people you see every day the grocery store clerk your banker like these, these people are going to be applying new um new formulations to the way they connect with you and you will be seeing that reformulate how you see yourself and then the the new moon is happening in your subconscious you know connecting the dots for you um, across the street in your seventh house, Uranus is in retrograde, has been for a bit, and it is now during this new moon in direct opposition of Juno and, uh, and Mercury going retrograde. So what does that mean? Uranus is destabilized your foundations on how you see partners. The way Taurus has responded uh, the sign of Taurus responds when Uranus gets inside of it. Uh, we, we see a shakeup of what was normal and an empowerment on what is fertile. There is a shock, an electric awakening that happens to feminine Venetian things because this again is Taurus, right? So we're having this uh, aspect happen in, in the sign of your love life. So the people that you've been attracted to, Scorpio, they destabilized. I like I can't put it any other way. Where you would normally find yourself very attracted to people who are very set, secure in their self, like very secure in general, and just know what they want and and be confident in what they want and stubborn with what they want. Those people are not so sure, and it's very alarming for you because it 
one of the wonderful things about the Scorpio uh, Taurus access is that you guys have the surety of a fixed sign. You have the positive, absolute energy. And when Uranus comes through that, that absolution, it's still absolute. It's just absolutely chaotic. It can't be a little bit. These are signs. These are signs that do not change. This energy is not mutable. No matter what mutable planet comes through it, it is not mutable. It makes a mutable planet not mutable. So what does this Taurus do to a retrograde uh, retrograde uh, Uranus? It it restabilizes it. It's using different fertilizers, trying new in ingenious ways to stabilize things without um without having to to wait there is there's a revolutionary speed that has picked up in the way that that things grow in the way that things uh pass in time and that is something that you've been experiencing on your access and this will not stop it's going to continue on with your partners you're going to continue on to Feel this, but this new moon energy will give you a highlight, <laughs> a limelight on your love life and your partners um, and the choices you make and the way you identify in relationships. <clears throat> uh, trining all of this is Neptune happening in your fifth house. That's awesome. It's been, I mean, Neptune has been in your fifth house with Pisces for a long time, but when it gets activated like this with a new moon and Mercury um, from a, a trining sign like this, you, you're able to release. Especially now that Neptune's in retrograde, it's not like you're just like, oh, that feels better. You're like, that was heavy. And I feel much better less uncomfortable it's not oh i feel better moving on it's like okay let's sit with why the this is the way it is because the veil is gone with neptune in retrograde in pisces the veil is gone there's no more bullshitting yourself excuse my language there's no more lying to yourself you have to be honest with yourself and there is a sextile to capricorn which is your third house of conceptual ideas right that has changed so having that release with your creative abilities, your fifth house, have fun. Let yourself make music or write or create about these fundamental changes that you're making in the way that you see the world. Because it's gonna be amazing when you do that. Uh, Mars, your chart ruler, retrograde, dancing with Lilith in Aries. Oh my God, what a headache. This sits um, sixth house. I had to count there because it sucks. <laughs> um, Mars is retrograding in your sixth house with Lilith. Just like watch your routines. It's it's supposed to be different. It's supposed to be a bit of a struggle. It's supposed to be you know worth it. But like you, that's what you do, right? You change. That's part of who you are and why you're so vital and why you're so established as such a strong individual, Scorpio. It's because you know how to change. And the only way we can change is when we go all the way in. No one can do it for us. Um, Virgo's in your 11th. Virgo, Venus is in your 11th house, blessing you through friends. So, yeah. Write, sing, create with friends. It will help stabilize you. It'll bring you back to those earthly matters and help you ground out. Okay? Have a wonderful one, Scorpio. I love you.